<gasps> no way! Ah! No way! No way! Oh my god! Oh my god! <gasps> oh my god! All right, listen. We've all seen clips like. Miss Duncan. Fuck off! Don't talk to me until I've had my goddamn sugar. <laughs> He put your brain in your clay. But did you ever want to know where they're from? In celebration of the new Penny Stalking that's coming out soon, released by Trigger, I want to talk about Penny and Stalking as it's one of my favorite shows to this day. I am so sorry about that. My gun must have slipped. Jesus! You were such a heartless whore! So let's start with a quick history lesson. Penny and Stalking is a show involving two angels, Penny and Stalking. As they're kicked out of heaven for various deeds of treachery and also eating food, they are sent down to earth to collect these tokens you get from killing demons in order to earn their way back into heaven. Yep, that's it. Very simple. What makes Pantheon Stalking so special lies in its dub and its humor, but they go head in head. As honestly, the dub reminds me of ghost stories in a way. My legs are moving. Oh, no, we didn't anywhere. Please just hear me out, please. That's me. Very American humor. It's as if they gave him a script and just said, you know, do whatever the fuck you want with this. It doesn't matter. And that's what I love about this show so much. The humor is definitely oh not for everyone, but it's definitely for me, so I don't care. The show was created by Gynax and ran from August 4th, 2010 all the way to June 4th, 2011, with 13 episodes and one extra special. So according to the wiki page, the creators of Gurren Lagann went on a staff trip somewhere and were just trying to relax. But they were drunk at the time, so they were just kind of throwing some crazy ass ideas at each other. And they did it so much that they made hella seasons worth of content. And boom, that's the show. Very fitting. As the show is full of adult content and a bunch of weird stuff, it only makes sense that it was made while a bunch of Japanese men were drunk. <laughs> so with that out of the way, let's get right into the actual anime. The episodes follow a classic American cartoon kind of style, where there's episodes where there's two segments that are split in between them. So you're getting two different episodes of content in one episode. They just happen to be a little bit shorter than usual. Which is fitting because with these people, you really don't need a long episode to have a good time. The shorter the better. And honestly, there is a storyline coming with this as well. The only problem is it's kind of sporadic and isn't in every single episode, but it doesn't really matter, so whatever. Your main characters, Panty and Stocking, Daughter Bell, who's a side character, Chuck, who is their weird green goblin dog thing? And Brief, who's a character that shows up a little bit later, but he's honestly one of my favorites. He's the only normal one out of everyone, as you could probably tell by the fact that he's the only person not really named after some kind of private garment. However, what is funny about his name is that Brief, as any person who speaks English would know, means short duration or anything like that. Which is a joke in and of itself, if you kind of look into his character a little bit. Haha. <laughs> But yeah, that concludes the good characters. Next up, we have the antagonists. So there's a lot of one-off antagonists, specifically for each episode and each segment, but there are a couple overarching ones. Like Scanty and Nisox, who are kind of the devil variants of Panty and Stalking. Upon us, I think they might be hoodlums. Give students a new sense of respect through rules! Wearing school uniforms keeps them focused on scholarship! They have these weird accents. No offense to anyone who has those accents, I actually think they're really cool. And they go around trying to fuck up the world, which they never can do because Penty and Stalking always stop them, even if it's by accident. Yeah, quick editor's note on that, actually, they seem to try to make the world better for some reason. I forgot why though. Then we have the evil version of Chuck named Fastener. I, I didn't even know his name, man. And the big bad villain named Corset. Wow, another weird joke about clothing. Ha <laughs> ha. Honestly, some of these episodes are really random. You have episodes where Panty and Stockings are the queens of high school, one about sperm entirely, one for people with inflation kinks, and the best episode, the casino episode. The casino episode is the best. Don't even at me on that, it is objectively the best episode. And another thing I want to talk about is the last two episodes, which although this show doesn't really have a storyline, these last two episodes actually have something going on in it. With the introduction of Corset, 
They have a bunch of weird stuff going on with opening hell, so of course they can rule the world. It's honestly kind of weird, but Scanty and Nisox have been hinting at it from the start, so it's whatever. Inevitably, one of them gets sent to heaven, and that person is stalking, because Panty, although helping killing people, is just not good. Stalking does most of the work throughout most of the show, so it only makes sense that she's the one to go to heaven. So the last two episodes are focused on Panty huh? trying to go around and get demon coins herself. That doesn't work out, however, as Scanty and Nisox, as well as Corset, finally have their grand opening. They can now finally represent themselves as true villains, and they completely mess up Panty's chances. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of the episode, but to make a long story short, Panty wants to have sex with her 1,000th person, but can't quite do it. The only opportunity she gets is to do it with Brief, but then she can't because she's been re-virginized for some reason. And then Corset turns Brief's dick into a key, it's, it's so confusing. But at the end of the day, all you need to know is that Brief is the key that is used to get Corset to rule both heaven, hell, and earth. So Stalking has to come back down from heaven to help Panty. Panty's able to de-re-virginize herself and become a no-virgin again and get her powers back. So they have one epic showdown between Corset, Scanty, and Nisox versus Panty, Stalking, and Garth. Which of course ends in the Angel's victory, as anyone would assume. But they don't actually get sent back to heaven for that. Instead, they just drive home like nothing happened. But if you stay to the end and watch the post credit scene, Stalking fucking stabs Panty! And kills her. Turns out that Stalking was a demon, and then the season ends. And because that's it, so does the video. Goodbye.